What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.4 RC or release candidates to both developers and to public beta testers. Now along with this update, we also got the RC version of iPadOS 18.4, watchOS 11.4, macOS Sequoia 15.4, tvOS and HomePod version 18.4 and visionOS 2.4. Now we did also get the RC build for iPadOS 17.7.6 and the fifth RC for macOS 14.7.5 and macOS 13.7.5. But of course, in this video, we are talking all about iOS and iPadOS 18.4. Now, the first thing you'll notice with this screen is that this is the first time I believe I've ever seen Apple say release candidates in the software update screen. Typically, it only says iOS 18.4 and that's it. But something changed with iOS 18.4 and now it includes the full release candidate wording right there. So that's the first change here with the RC build of 18.4. I guess technically that would have been in 18.4 beta 4, but nonetheless, that is a new uh, change there. So the size of this update came in at 7.65 gigabytes. So of course, very large since we are technically going from a beta to a final release. The RC or release candidates, if you don't know, is basically the final release just a week in advance, typically about a week in advance for beta tester so big update size as expected let's go ahead and check out the build number for this rc so settings general about 18.4 the new build is 22e239 and that should be the same build as the final release when it comes out to the general public if not it will be something very similar to that maybe 240 instead and if we head down to the modem firmware that is 1.54.03 on the iphone 16 series all right so now what's new here with with the RC build of iOS 18.4. And the first thing comes from Apple. They actually put out a press release this morning announcing that there's a new feature coming in iOS 18.4 that's going to enable the AirPods Max to have lossless audio and ultra low latency audio. So they say that with iOS 18.4, the AirPods Max will become the only headphones that enable musicians to both create and mix in personalized spatial audio with head tracking. And it says that with the iOS 18.4, 18.4 update, the AirPods Max will unlock 24 bit, 48 kilohertz lossless audio, preserving the integrity of original recordings and allowing listeners to experience music the way the artist created it in the studio. So that's a big deal. And you'll also be able to plug your AirPods Max into the computer, which is also a big deal for even video editors. That's something I've wanted for a while. And because of that, Apple also released a USB C to 3.5 millimeter audio cable. So they now sell that in at the Apple Store store. Now, unfortunately, if you have the AirPods Max with the lightning cable, it looks like this is not going to work for you. It looks like this is only going to work on the AirPods Max with USB-C, which is a bit unfortunate since I personally did not get the new AirPods Max with USB-C. I only have the lightning version. So that's a bit unfortunate, but it is still good to see Apple finally bring this update to the AirPods Max. This is what we've been wanting since the very you know first release of the AirPods Max. But aside from that, there's not really a lot changed here in the RC build of iOS 18. For pretty much everything is the same as what we saw in beta four. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here is that some people were complaining that the little toggles here for the cellular connectivity and Wi Fi are not syncing up properly on the RC build. So you'll notice that if my signal goes down, the signal bar right here will not correspond to that. So that was actually a bug in beta four as well. So for some reason, the individual cellular toggle does not update like the Wi Fi individual toggle does. However, in the platter here, the cellular toggle does you know, basically change when the signal goes down up here. So that's a bug that was existing in beta four and it's still here in the RC. Unfortunately, it's not fixed. And you can see what I mean right here. So we currently have three bars. However, the individual cellular toggle shows that we have full bars and in the platter here, it corresponds properly and shows that we only have three bars. So you go, you could see it change in real time. But again, for whatever reason, the individual toggle is not working properly. However, it is working properly for Wi-Fi. Now, one thing that's still missing here in the RC build of iOS 18.4 is the back tap banner. So when you go ahead and activate back tap by double tapping on the back of your iPhone or triple tapping, whatever you have it set up to that banner that existed for multiple betas has now been basically discontinued. Apple basically, it seems like scrapped that idea of having a banner for back tap, which I like the option to have it on or off. But for some reason, Apple just completely took it away. The UI was not the best on it. But if you go into your accessibility settings here and then go down to touch and then down to back tap, 
before we did have a little section here to indicate if you want to have the banner on or off but here in the RC it looks like that did not make a return and it's going to be gone for the foreseeable future however one bug that has been fixed that has been driving me and a lot of other people crazy is related to the camera so when you go into the camera application and it's on the rear facing camera and then you switch it around to the front facing camera before sometimes it would take like up to 10 seconds of just a blurry screen and it would not you know show the viewfinder would not activate that front facing camera for quite some time and that was impacting me on beta 4 as well but that appears to be fixed here with the RC build which is a great sign and also some users were having issues where the camera in general would just not populate at all in third party you know uh, applications like Snapchat or Instagram or TikTok something like that anywhere where you use the camera application you would have to force quit out of the application and go back in for it to work people who are reporting that as an issue also say that has been fixed here with RC now there's also been a bug where the Apple watch does not properly calculate the calories burned during a workout so I'm not sure if that's a watch OS or an iOS issue but it is something I've noticed in beta 3 and beta 4 sometimes it would not calculate the uh, calories burned properly so it would still calculate them but sometimes it would not give you credit for as many calories as it should hopefully that's fixed with this latest RC of watch OS and with iOS but I'll report back on that in the Apple weekly episode now I did also want to mention a change in the watch OS 11.4 RC related to the alarms so there's a new breakthrough silent mode feature here in watch OS 11.4 so if you go into your alarms on your Apple watch and go into one of the alarms and then you scroll down to the bottom underneath of snooze you'll see a new option that says break through silent mode and this is going to do exactly what it says it will break through silent mode and notify you of that alarm with of course a vibration and a sound and this is great because I don't really have sound coming from my Apple watch ever because I'm always in silent mode but this time if you have like a really important alert or really important alarm you can have it so that you get sound and that vibration and then also I'm usually able to find something new related to the Apple News plus food section right here when you go into a recipe there's been a lot of little tweaks and a lot of little word changes throughout the betas of iOS 18.4 but I'm not seeing anything new here in the RC build however this whole section feels a lot more fluid and a lot quicker than it did previously so before on the previous betas it was kind of clunky and there would be some lag between when you press on something especially the directions and when you scroll and go back and forth between the ingredients and directions but now it's very smooth and it works great so I think this application this little section in Apple News is going to be a big help for a lot of people that are into cooking and then taking a look at the release notes here these look about the same as the beta 4 release notes so I'm not really seeing anything new here in the release notes for the RC which is a bit unfortunate however we did have a lot of resolved issues in beta 4 so I guess it's not a terrible thing because we don't have a lot of outstanding issues so that's always good but pretty much nothing of note to mention here on the release notes now as far as the overall performance goes performance feels fine here on the RC build of iOS 18.4 honestly not a huge change from the fourth beta it feels about the same as beta 4 to me which is a good sign you know I told you guys beta 4 was really good it felt almost like a stable release to me so really no issues on beta 4 and I would expect that to continue here with the RC of iOS 18.4 I'm not really seeing any type of bugs I'm not seeing any type of lag anything like that and as far as overall performance in terms of you know Geekbench scores I did run a Geekbench 6 test here and we scored a 35 30 on the single core 86 65 on the multi-core you can see how that compares right there so just barely higher than the last run on beta 4 for the single core and then for the multi-core it is slightly lower than what we scored on beta 4 but again these are all you know just numbers they're just synthetic benchmarks in the real world it feels about the same as beta 4 which to me is a good thing and of course given the fact that we have some of those bug fixes that's also going to make this feel more stable like the camera bug fix and things like that and of course any other bug fixes that you guys might experience that I've not you know noticed yet and when it comes to battery life battery life was actually amazing on beta 4 like you guys mentioned it in my video as well how I pretty much kept the same battery life from the beginning to near the end of that video so battery life has been quite impressive on beta 4 and once again I would expect that to continue here in the RC release and of course the final release as well so battery life really hasn't been bad for a while on iOS 18 
but you know, it's good to see it slightly improving time after time. And again, I would expect a small bump here with the final release and the RC build since we don't have as much background updating and, you know, reporting bugs and things like that going on. I would expect a minor bump to the battery life, but nothing significant over beta four. Okay. So now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be the final release of iOS 18.4. Now Apple mentioned in the press release that they put out this morning that iOS 18.4 is coming in April. So again, it's pretty weird because Apple typically releases you know, final public software on Mondays. So Monday would be March 31st. That is not April. So that tells me that Apple is either planning a second RC release, or we're just going to see the final version of 18.4 come at some points from Tuesday to even Friday. So some point from the first through the fourth is when we could see iOS 18.4. If I had to guess between those days, it would be on Tuesday, April 1st, but we'll have to wait and see. I, you know, I don't really see why Apple would release a second and RC build, but it is a possibility. So I did want to throw that out there, but nonetheless, we should be seeing that final release along with all the other software coming next week or at the very latest, if Apple does release a second RC, the very latest would be the week of April 7th. And also keep in mind, we should be seeing the WWDC invites start going out very soon. We should start seeing the announcement for the official day and time for WWDC 2025. So keep a lookout for that. Of course, I will bring you guys that news here on the channel right once it happens as well. So that is iOS 18.4 RC. Stay tuned for the final public release. I will be bringing you guys that video with all of the features and changes included in the update next week when we get that final public release. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS update videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.